Hello, everyone. So today we're going to, I, I thought we'll look at um, uh, price tracking. Like how do we do competitive price tracking um, on a website like eBay? Right? So we're going to use beautiful soup, Python, of course, to do this. Uh, so it's, uh, so we need to first of all select a product for which there are, there is enough price tracking that's going on. So I'm going to select a popular one, which is the iPhone. And if you're going to track prices on that, you want to be narrowing it down to a particular model. Right? Let's take something, let's say the iPhone 8. All right. And maybe even in that, if you're going to track prices, you want to be able to say, I want the 256 GB iPhone. And yes, so I think that's enough for, for narrowing down to actually compare prices and say, okay, there's something going on here, which I should be, um, yep. So this should be good enough as an example, at least. I'm sure if we can further optimize it, but for now, I'm just gonna go with this ahead and earlier. So this is gonna be our sort of basic um, you know, basic code, which loads everything up. Before I do that, let me just replace the URL here. Um, there you go. And then I'm ready for you. All right, so here's what we're doing. We're loading beautiful soup library, BS4. We're loading the request library, which comes with Python. And this will be used to get the data and this will be used to pass the data. So, and then I'm initializing the user agent header here, yeah. and then I'll pass it over here. User agent is to trick you the eBay into thinking we are a regular web browser. Uh, without that, uh, they don't like it, web servers, and they may not return the, return the call. Beautiful soup actually takes the response.content. We just use request.get function to get it. And the content is in response, and we pass it to beautiful soup, and it makes a soup out of it and basically makes it an exam tree which you can pass and now we can do whatever we want out of it we can select we can use a select query and select a particular item inside of the exam document right so we can use css selectors to do that we can select a particular id or a class or a particular html tag whatever we want and it will give you it returns you just you know arrays of those items so let's get into it a little bit Let's see if we can get, let's see if we can familiarize ourselves with the HTML here so that we can scrape it. So if I look at it here, I'm always looking for what is the block? How do I divide this HTML, a complex piece like this into blocks I can handle, right? So I'm always looking at, for example, this is a sponsored one. Let's just go here and right click and inspect. And yeah, there you go. So you can see that the li has a class called as item and that holds everything together. And if you see, each of those li class is one item. They move around a bit. And you can, we can use that as a selector very safely, I feel, because that looks like a meaningful name as well. So what I'll do is I'll just copy it, take it to the HTML and paste it over here. Um, and I'll do a couple of tests over here to see if this works out, right? So what I'll do is I'll do a soup.select and then call and then try to um, use the S item class to see if I can get that data. So the dot selector means that's the class name. You have to do a hash, it's the ID. I'm gonna use that. And, um, I'm going to, this will return an array, so let's just collect that somewhere, or just, let's just print it. I'm going to print an array of these items, and if I don't want to confuse myself, I should print just the, sort of the first item of that array, right? I'll save this as price track to py, okay? Um, okay, that exists. Um, I'm going to call it eBay. We were doing 
uh, earlier example on Amazon, price track eBay.py. Okay. And I'm going to clear these early results. And now let's run um, Python 3 price track eBay dot py and then let's see what happens let's see if it prints anything yep you can see the s item class li class that's been pulled out and that should be one of the one of the phones right one of the listings really right so now let's be emboldened by this so what i'll do is now instead of limiting myself to the first item of the array i'm just going to for each this that means there's a bunch of stuff in the array so i want to traverse the array so i'm going to go for item in that sorry, that and then here the items will come for me so let's make this now inside of this now i'm going to go print item okay i'm taking it step by step guys Okay, so now it should give me a lot more than just, okay, that prints everything there. So we're going to do a separator. It's always a good idea to have a separator between things so that we can make sure that things are separated. All right, let's see. Yeah, I can see the separator being printed for each of those items. So I think we are on to something here. Now I feel safe to collect everything inside of a part. So this HTML document now is divided into the exact areas that we want it. So all the boilerplate will be removed and the LIS item class is a very safe place to get whatever we want to get now. Okay. So that relaxes me. So what I'll do now is I will try and get, let's try and get something, at least one item here. So let's open this up. I wonder what the title look like, looks like. Yeah, the title is H3 class, so we can just go with that or we can go with the class name. So, we're just going to go with the class name. Okay. Now, right, I can show you both. I'm in a generous mood. But, nah. Uh, let me just start straight away with the print item. Now, we're not using the entire soup, but just the item. So, we're querying with the net. So, you can query there. And we're going to query with the dot, that class name. And in this case, it again returns an array, even though there'll be one, one, one title. Okay, so let's see. We'll just block this off. We don't need that. Let's see. Only titles coming through. Let's see. Ouch. Um, item to select. Item title. Didn't quite work out. Didn't it? Did it there? Um, okay, okay, okay. Let me see if I made a mistake somewhere. Yeah, this is an array, first of all. So that's a zero. We still have to get the text. I forgot that. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why. I don't know. No, not really. It's index is out of range. Um, item dot select. Let me see. Did I copy it? Okay. Class equals that. Item dot. Are we still getting this? Are we still getting different outlets? Yeah, let's see if there is an issue between the Chrome as well as this one. Is there a separation here which you're not aware of? Um, and look at the earlier code so that I think of, yeah, item class S item title is H3 class. Uh, it should work. Mm -hmm. 
Let me see if there is an error in copying from HTML sometimes. And it's definitely item, it's definitely select. Select it as item. Have I done any mistake here? I don't think so. And I'm going to do that. Oh, I think I know what's happening here. Not all of the S items have titles in them. All right. Because I think they're using that particular tag for something else. So what I'll do is I'll put this in a try catch loop. All right. That's always a good idea. That's always a good idea. So I'm going to go try. In fact, if there is no title, let it move along. You know, we don't need this. Um, and then we go. Um, yeah. And then we go catch of E, and then we go print nothing here. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fool it into moving on in life. Okay. So let's see if this works out for us. Um, Actually, sorry, it's, it should be, it can be catch, it should be catch an exception here. Except, exception as or something we should give it. And then we can do whatever we want with E. In this case, we don't care about it, we just ignore it. And now it should ignore the rest and print the items. Just see, only titles it should print. <sighs> yep, uh, suspicion was right. All right, that was tricky, guys. That was a big relief for us all. <laughs> so now let's see with this sort of model, uh, we'll just see if um, we can get this. We can get the subtitle, can't we? Let's just get the subtitle. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just keep a copy of this all over the place a little bit. And let's just sort of now hurry through and get a ton of these things. There we go, subtitle. What else can we get? Can we get, so that'll give us sort of that, that, that whole description area. I guess the next thing is, um, Okay, so let's close the subtitle. Item details. Okay, so inside of the item details, maybe we want to break it down. So I'm going to go a little, because I want the price to be separated. So I'm just going to pick up item price here separately. I'll put that here. And I'm going to take from United States. So whatever that is. So I guess that's the location. So We'll take the location here now. I'm just going to take the class and do that. And then do basically the price is the main thing we are comparing anyway. But the, let's keep going. Purchase options, we don't need to worry about. The shipping is a part of pricing. So I'm going to pick up the shipping cost. Um, there you go. I think that's important. So the shipping is a key price comparison element. Then I think that's it, right? So if you can get these three four things, we should be done. I'm just going to eliminate the rest of it. We don't need it. Let's see what we get now. There you go. So we got everything. We got iPhone, the subtitle, the price, and then from where, maybe that's important, and then the shipping cost that keeps changing, as you can see, that makes a big difference many times. So that's how you do a simple price tracker on eBay. All right, so one of some of the tips before you go is to make sure these headers are updated to the latest ones. You will be able to get user agent headers because eBay will block you after a while if you keep
keep sending the same address, so you may want to rotate it. Uh, there is an article, uh, there is a video earlier where I've shown you how to how you can do that. I link that to uh, in in the description. You can check that out. How to do that? The other thing that you can do is actually pass this through some sort of rotating proxy. Right? I happen to run a company which does exactly that. So I'm going to pitch that to you now. It's called proxiesapi.com. And what you do there is you will be able to rotate your request through a pool of about a million plus proxies, two million proxies to be, to be uh, accurate. And all you need to do is instead of calling eBay, you're going to call our API endpoint, which is api.proxiesapi.com with your API key and the URL eBay itself. Your eBay URL itself is passed as a parameter to us. So we'll route everything through that. We'll automatically try um, multiple requests till we get it. Uh, we do browser entry rotation, we do captures, we do rendering even now, and we also give this away a thousand calls, API calls free per month. And without any credit card, all you have to do is just sign up, get the API key, put that in, and then start making calls. So that's a proper way to scale it, even if you don't use it. Uh, I have to I had to tell you that, and I happen to have a service, so I had to pitch you that. Otherwise, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, for most purposes, this should be enough. Um, but if you want to go production, which you want to go pro, then consider using your proxies um, rotation service like proxysapi.com. That's my service, guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.